All right, and we're set and ready to go. And so today, our 15th virtual orientation session, our final week, hopefully everyone's having a good week. As I mentioned before, if you have any questions throughout our tour of campus, please feel free to send in the questions to me and I'll be able to ask them of our presenters or I might be able to answer the question for you. Uh, and you will be muted throughout the session, but our presenters will obviously unmute themselves whenever they have some useful information for us. And so with that, I'm gonna turn it over to our wonderful orientation leaders who are around campus ready to present for you. All right, hi everybody. My name is Kylie and I'm the grad assistant for New Student and Transition Programs. And our first presenter, I'm gonna pass it over to Emma to introduce herself. Okay, can we hear me now? Yep. Great. So I'm Emma. I'm an orientation leader here on campus. Um, I'm majoring in hospitality and tourism. Uh, we can go to Layla. Hey guys, my name is Layla. I am a sophomore here, our orientation leader this year. And I'm actually majoring in health sciences with a minor in Spanish, uh, medical Spanish. I'm gonna go ahead and pass it out to Amy. Hi guys, my name's Amy Long. I am a rising junior here at Seton Hill, majoring in English and minoring in psychology. And I am also an orientation leader here on campus. And I'm going to pass it over to Maisie. Hi, my name is Maisie. I'm going to be a sophomore here on campus and I'm majoring in early education. All right, we're gonna start with Layla, who's at the front of our campus, ready to give you a tour. Hey guys, so I, you can see the administration building in the background. I'm gonna go ahead and turn my camera so you can have a better view of what is in front of me. Um, I am currently standing in the front of the administration building, as I said, which is one of the first buildings you'll see when you come into Cedar Hill Drive. So this is the main entrance. If you see there, that's the street that you're gonna come up when you're going into the parking A other buildings your residence halls are that way that drive pill right there goes around comes up this way right here to the entrance there are a few details about this entrance this is the front entrance of the administration building which also serves as one of the main shuttle stops on campus the shuttle will take you both downtown to the performing arts and certain at arts center and the visual centers and makes a few stop up here on campus as well. As you can see, this entrance right here has been designated exit only. So when you're taking up the shuttle, you'll be able to exit through this door. But when you're getting off the shuttle, you're actually gonna come up this way. So I'm gonna take you up to the sidewalk right here. And this whole building is the administration building that we'll in a moment see from inside. Just bear with me for one second. You can see other buildings as well. We're gonna see that in a few minutes more that it connects with this main building. And we are going through here. So we are here in front, uh, inside of the administration building. We will find the Griffin Welcome Center, which you should have been um, familiar with if you have come in campus before for your tour. If not, here it is. Here are these doors to the right our staircases. For this time, we are gonna only use them for going up the stairs. So if you have any classes in this building, this is the, air, the stairs that you will use. When you come up here, you are going to find an A01104, the Office of Financial Services and Registrar. Here will be the doors. They'll normally be open from 7 a.m. until 4. And if you need any forms, they're also available right here up front. Here you'll find some important information. You'll find um, events happening as well. That right here is the main entrance that we saw from outside just now. If you're taking the shuttle and you're coming from this area, you're actually gonna walk straight forward in through those double doors and you'll see the shuttle entrance that I just show you. So here we actually have our front desk. 
our great uh, SHU staff member, Sherry Vitrone, works here. If you ever have any questions or need any directions, she's a great person to ask. She'll be able to guide you or um, send you to the right person that has the answer. Here you'll see the elevator for the administration building. Um, make sure that you uh, pay attention to the stick. To either keep in one direction, one direction should you go. It's a bathroom right here. Um, the fountains will be closed um, for this area. And then we are going to go to these double doors, which you see behind the front desk. Just keep going this way. And then this one, it will be the administration annex, the admin annex. Right behind the front desk is the entrance to the administration annex. The campus police is one important office that is located here. And we are going to see it in a second. Here to the left, you'll see the Greensburg room. Macy, in a few minutes, will actually go through it with you. Here at the end of the hall, we haven't left the same hallway. It'll be the police department security office. Uh, many of you will actually need to stop here um, in order to pick up your parking passes this year. So with that being said, now I'm going to pass it off to Amy, who's in the Sicilian Hall. Hi, I'm in Sicilian Hall, which is right underneath St. Joseph's Chapel, and it is on the second floor of Admin, as well as the second floor of Mara. Now, as you can see, it is a very big room. This is where we house a lot of our bigger social events, although this year it will be changed to some smaller and socially distanced events. And this year, as you can probably see from the many desks sitting around the area, this will also be used as a classroom. So I'm going to pass it off to Maisie, who is in St. Joseph's Chapel. All right, hello everybody. Um, I'm right outside of admin two and three. Let me, I'm so sorry, let me flip the camera here. All right, there's admin two and three right in front of me. You'll see we have more social distancing uh, guidelines for our staircases and all that. And I'll take you into St. Joe's. So this is St. Joseph's Chapel, affectionately known as St. Joe's among us students here. Uh, this space is located on the third floor of admin. It's one of the most beautiful locations on campus and mass is typically held here along with other religious ca campus traditions like opening liturgy and crystal knot. One, one great thing about this space is that students from any faith are welcome here. Uh, you could practice anything that uh, you believe in in this area. Um, students are come, welcome to come and peacefully enjoy the chapel when events are not in session. It's a great place to get away from hustle and bustle of classes. And I'll just show you a little bit of this this is one of the most beautiful buildings on campus. And again, everybody and anybody is welcome here. Um, that's an organ and it's very old and it's wonderful. And yeah, we just have some really nice stained glass windows and this is a chapel for you guys. All right, I'm going to go see Emma on the fifth floor of admin. All right, guys, so I'm on the fifth floor of admin, and on this side of the hallway, we have the Health and Wellness Center, and here you can go and see Annette's team if it's absolutely necessary. This year, we're having a few different changes. Um, we are doing the telehealth and telecounseling services instead. If we go further down this hallway right in front of me, we have the Academic and Achievement Center. Further on down this hallway, you are going to see the opportunity program down here. And if we keep on going, we have the, which is the Multicultural International Studies. This is a really great hallway if you need any kind of help. And I'm going to pass it back to Layla. Okay guys, so I'm back. Um, I you can tell we are here on the administration building still. You see that there's carpet and wooden floor. You'll see the small staircase that will be actually going down only. So again, going back to the shuttle, if you have to catch the shuttle, if you're an admin, you can use this staircase as well. This right here that I'm, you can see in the background, is what we call the bridge from admin tomorrow. 
and you'll see in a second why it's a bridge from one building to the other. So again, make sure that you keep your safe distance. to the right of your way. Here you see the change in flooring. So we went from wood to tile. This indicates that we're actually in Mara now. So we are here, you'll see these doors. The commuter lounge will actually go around and I'll show you a different entrance for the same location. This, um, from admin to low and Mara Halls together. You can only access this from the first or second floors of these buildings, but this is a great way to travel from one hall to the other. Here you can see more staircases. This one will be down only, so you'll use them from the third floor all the way down. We have our water fountains, so this will be restricted and not used, but if you have a water, uh, Cup, you can use this one right here. There'll be cups provided as well that you can use through the day. And I'm not sure if you remember, but Amy wasn't necessarily in hall. That those double doors right there at the end are another entrance and exit through the Sicilian hall. Make sure though that if you have lecture in that area, you consult with your professor the first day of class if you're allowed to use that entrance only because the room is so big and we'll be using it differently. So when you turn left here, Amy's right there, say hello. <laughs> so here we have our commuter lunch. This is our commuter lunch on campus. It is a great place to pass the time between classes, eat lunch, or just hang out with friends. There are vending machines, microwaves, pool tables, and more. So here are the vending machines. This microwave is available at any given time. These doors do not lock. You can go through here. Make sure that you are careful with the steps. If you can see, we have couches, tables, high tops. They all have been already social distanced, so make sure that you try to keep them that way so you are safe for yourself and others. We have a TV. We have our nice pool table. This commuter info board, if you're a commuter, this is a great way to find information on campus. Anything that is happening will be posted here. Anything general and for commuters only as well. You pass these doors, we're still in the same commuter lounge, it's just a nice big area. Another bulletin board, more seating area. We also have a printer available in this area that you can use your printing balance on and more study area. You can see here lockers as well. And if you're a commuter, you can get a locker on room 223 with Mitch Judy and Amy will actually guide you through that room. And I'm gonna go ahead and pass it to Amy now, and who is in Mara Solarium. Hello, I'm here in Mara Solarium, and it is so named after these beautiful windows right here. And right in front of it is this beautiful desk, and this is where a lot of information will be housed on campus. I've walked through and there'll be information on anything ranging from clubs to events around campus. And right over here is the Mara elevator. It is an oldie, but it is a goodie, they say. And it can take you anywhere from Mara to the dining room. We also have, this section is also home to Corey Campbell, Director of Residence Life. And his office is right down here, right next to Emma, say hello. His office is in 221, and it is also housed our Dean of Students and Diversity Office, Adriel Hilton. And the calmer evening hours, you can find some students studying here. There's also a solarium on Mara 3rd, just above us, that is very much like this one. And there's lots of information all over these walls. And now I'm going to pass it to Maisie, who is just down the hall in our campus ministry lounge. All right, here's our campus ministry lounge uh, right up here. Unfortunately, the doors are locked today, but you guys can see as much as you possibly can. Uh, you have some really nice writings on the wall, a beautiful mural in there. Um, it's a great place to escape and relax on campus. 
It's open available to every student. You can come here and visit or study and just take time to relax. Here's some signs. And we have this wonderful um, information TV right here. And right down there is the Mars Solarium that you guys just saw. Um, I'm going to pass this back to Emma, who is standing in low hallway. So we just saw the Mara Solarium, and if you go down this hallway here that goes right past Corey Campbell's office, you're going to go into the low hallway area. And it, this area is really important. There's so many offices down here. Um, you have student government, you have student engagement, and we also have the career closet that's also super important. What the career closet is, is if you have a job interview, if you have um, a class you need to dress professional for, you can contact the career closet and just say, hey, I need to be professional for this class and they will help you out. So if we go down this hallway and through these doors, we are going to hit the steps. And everyone on campus calls these the wooden steps. It's a really, really, um, And then if we move a little bit closer here, almost where Layla is, is our, hey Layla, um, is our Sullivan lawn. And up there, you will be able to see people uh, just hanging out on the lawn, doing homework, enjoying the good weather. And then we will hand this off to Layla to see the library. Hello again. So here you see Emma right there. She just showed you the lawn area. So if you're walking down the sidewalk, you can see Reeves Common Area right here. We're gonna go through the doors and I'll tell you a little bit more about what you can do in this area. Oh, maybe not. Let me use a trick here, give me one second. I guess they closed it. Okay, so. I apologize for that, but I'll still tell you a little bit more about the stuff that you can do in there. So we have the Commons is a great place if you want to be productive. Um, we have in the lower portion of the building, we have our library and quiet study areas, which if I show you through here, you see those staircase. I hope that my reflection is not covering at all. You can see and go down that way. You can find the actual library with books, anything like that, in study, uh, quiet study areas. If you come into the main floor, which we would have been accessed through these doors, it's double door, um, you can also um, have a great place to study and get your classwork done. It is great, a great area to find, um, It is a great way area to study in groups. It's not a quiet area. Or it's not um, loud. They can you can work in projects, anything like that. Um, this room actually. Layla, I think we lost. Oh, Layla, I think we lost you for a second because I think you're changing from Wi-Fi to a different router because you were outside. So we lost you there for a second. I apologize. Let me see. Can you hear me? Yep, I can hear you now. We Perfect. just lost you a little bit ago. No worries. Okay, so I'm going to go through the side doors. This is still the Reese Common area, and I'm going to try and access it so I can show you more rooms. If not. I will just discuss what we can do in there and hopefully we can uh, show you a lot later time. It is open, yay. So these hidden doors, you'll find your way around. Um, you'll get used to it, I promise. <laughs> but these staircases right here actually guide you through the breeze area as well. So the area is actually motor, activate, uh, motor sensor activated. And as I, was, as I was discussing, this is a great place 
for students to get some of their classwork done. This room is also home of the tutors, as well as the information, information technology center and the career and professional development center. Um, so if you have any problems with your laptops or other devices, need help with your resume, or want some constructive feedback on paper, this place does it all. So here we are. Here's the writing center. So if that will be the main door right over there, we have all those windows, natural light. You can come through the side. This whole area is for students to study. Here we have the writing center. And then if you keep moving this way, you'll find the career and professional development center. Any help finding any type of interview, professional jobs, anything like that will be right here. And we have our learning studio for the mathematics and enrichment center as well. And these double doors are for our solution center. So as I was mentioning earlier, anything that has to do with laptop issues, iPad, anything like that, you can come to them and they'll help you out. And now I'm going to pass it out to Amy again. So she's gonna show you the dining hall. Hello everyone, I am here in the dining hall and we are going to start off by showing you where you pay for your food. Typically there will be a cashier here who can just scan your student ID, it makes it very easy and very quick. And currently the dining hall is closed, but we can see right through here, this is where you can find all of your desserts right at this little station here. There's always ice cream and all kinds of goodies through there. And then in this circular part, that is where you can find the main food distributed. So this can range from Indian food to, I don't know, maybe some turkey dinner, as well as over here where you see the white station is where you can have burgers, chicken, hot dogs, veggie burgers, what have you, whatever you're feeling. And then right at the center, that is the salad bar. And that is all the time. We always have a salad option. And then right over here past this wall, there will be a cereal bar as well as toast, bagels, and milk. And then right past there in the back is the pizza and pasta station. And right next door to it is the uh, sandwich station, which is also always open from lunch to dinner. And it even has a gluten-free section in the salad bar section. And although we will be socially distanced this year, this is a very big area and it will only seat four to a table this year, but there is plenty of space for everyone to get some food and have some good times with your friends. This is where you can find your drinks as well. We have juice, hot drinks from coffee and hot chocolate, soda, lemonade, tea, and then right through here is Maisie, which I'm going to pass it through as she shows you the Greensburg room and the spirit room. All right, so <laughs> there's Amy. Um, I wanted to stand here so I could kind of show you guys how uh, the Greensburg room connects to the dining hall. So we have this little hallway, with some extra seating. Uh, I don't believe this will be open this year, but um, things could change. So take it through here, just to show you some extra stuff around campus. So we're approaching they are still the green. doing some cleaning, so that's why the tables are on top of each other, but it will be open, this room. Oh, that's even better. All right. So this is the Greensburg room. It's another popular location to dine after grabbing a bite to eat. Um, in the hours between meals, you could also find students gathering here to hang out or study. So it's quite a big room. Again, we're having more social distance eating. Right out here is a courtyard. I'll show you as much as I can of that. It's very nice to sit out there. It's very peaceful very relaxing. Um, there you go. And then right over here is uh, the Greensburg room connects to the admin annex and Layla was down here earlier showing you guys but right through here, back here, excuse me, um, right here is the police department room for you. So that's another way that you can get there and straightforward is how we get to admin. I'm going to pass this back to Layla now. I I think we're actually going to pass it back to Amy at this time. And so Amy, um, you're near, you're on your way to Sullivan, correct? 
or McKenna. There you are, McKenna. Yeah, I'm entering right through here, running a little behind. That's all right. You can show us from the oh, McKenna gosh. side. We're oh, is that okay? It might have been after hours from where we were at initially. Yeah. So McKenna connects to Sullivan, and so I'm try in, this door maybe. In so, Sullivan, we have the bookstore. You'll have the Griffin Cove, which is a late night eatery. Someone did ask the question earlier about the dining hall. The dining hall is typically open from seven to eight. Uh, they will post all of the hours for our dining hall when we do arrive back to campus so that you are aware of when breakfast, lunch, and dinner are. On Saturdays and Sundays, we have brunch. And so on Saturday and Sundays, you'll see brunch. And the dining hall will have gaps in between the meals so they can do cleaning. What happens if you don't use all of your meals in a week? So great question. And so uh, that's where Darren really talked in the beginning, depending upon if you plan to go home. So if you're within a, a very close distance of campus, you might want a 10 meal plan for a week. If you're within an hour and you might go home uh, on a regular basis, maybe a 14. But if you're, if you're far away from home and you don't necessarily have the chance to be able to go there, then most likely the 17 meal plan would be best for you. So meal plan goes from Monday through Sunday. And so if on Sunday you have any uh, extra meal swipes left, you can always use those in the Griffins Co. Uh, but, but meal plans do not carry over from week to week. So that's why it's important to have a meal plan conducive to what, how many meals you plan to have throughout that given week. And I think then from there, Maisie, are you near the Havy Clock by any chance, Maisie? I'm on my way. I'm just around in the corner. <laughs> All right. So we'll be able to show you your, and we'll pull up here. So it looks like Layla's outside of Boyle and is able to show us some of Boyle. Again, yes. And Lynch. Yes. So here we have the Reeves, as I mentioned. That area right there is Mara, and that area right there, you may not see it right now, but it will be the area for the dining hall. So we are outside. If you're coming this way, make sure that when we're actually in session, make sure that you look both ways. Don't get run over, please. And we are actually here in front of Boyle. Boyle is the, um, it's the entrance for the Boyle, our natural and higher health sciences building. There are many places to study, relaxing here, as well as ample classroom space and labs. This building is home to our physician assistant graduate program, nutrition and dietetics program, and connects to Lynch Hall, where many LECOM classes um, are held. So if you keep going down this sidewalk, you're gonna see the side entrance for the LECOM area. It will have a blue sign for that. And for here, this building also has an eatery called the Vibe where you can get food 24 7. It is a scan and go uh, but it does not use your meal plan. It is cash or credit. If you ever want a snack or late night meal this is a great place for you. Unfortunately um, it is luck because we are after hours but as you said it's easily connectable. You go through these doors, double door, and if you have any classes in Boyle you're gonna go through those staircases up there and if you are looking for the Vibe is actually right there. You're gonna have the food availability, and then there's like a Sam's uh, that you can cash out with your credit card. And right here, all of that is boiled. And I wish I could show you, if you go through a hallway to your left, it actually connects to the Lynch Hall, which is where most Leakum area is located. And the second floor is used for labs. So I'm going to go ahead and pass and it out here. to Maisie. Are you are you at the, at the heavy clock? I am. All right. So this is heavy clock. It's a very well known landmark on campus. It's a great drop off location for food delivery and a popular meetup place for friends and students. So it's right beside parking lot A, and that's right in front of us is Reeves Library. Here's Sullivan Hall, and there's Havy Hall, which is the name for the clock. Um, it's also very close to be connected to a shuttle stop, and it's just an easy place to find your way around campus. And um, are we finishing up with Emma? I 
think we are. Yes. So if you walk up the hill past Tavy, Brownlee's over here, and then Farrell's right here, you will see the Sisters of Charity um, Cemetery. And then you will see this beautiful place called the Overlook. This is actually connected and a part of the cemetery. I'm gonna go a little quick here because I'm gonna start to get rained on. Um, but if you go to the outer edge of the Overlook, you have a beautiful look of Greensburg here. And then I'm going to pass it back to Kylie. All right, well, I think that with a couple hiccups here and there with some locked doors, we did get a pretty uh, solid view of campus. Um, we're gonna open it up with Matt to help with a couple Q and A's. So if you have any questions, feel free to text him in the chat and we will do our best to answer those questions for you. Anyone have additional questions, feel free to text it. And while we're doing that, if you want to, you can unmute your camera. We'll take a group photo to make sure we're all set here. Everyone knew that time was coming. And there we go. Some people are all ready. Let me just get my camera set here. All right. Good to see so many smiling faces tonight. I've missed you all. It's been three days without a virtual orientation session. I've been lonely. All right. Three, two, one. There we go. Questions. Any questions that anyone has, and even if they're not necessarily specifically pertaining to maybe some of the spots we showed you. If there's anything else we can help you out with, let us know. I hope that helped. And what I will say too, is I know we weren't able to show all of the spots on campus, uh, but when you arrive to campus, whether it is, whether your move-in date is on the 12th, 13th or 14th, there will be plenty of opportunities for you to be able to explore campus on your own. I normally find that that is one of the best ways to get familiar with campus is to explore on your own. From there, we will have many events starting at 3 p.m. on Friday for Welcome Weekend. So starting 3 p.m. on Friday the 14th, all through Friday night, all day Saturday the 15th, and all day Sunday the 16th, we, we have events that we are preparing for you. We hope to get that schedule out as soon as we can before the end of the week. But it is important to know that typically on Sunday, is when our orientation leaders will walk you around campus with a classroom tour. So if you bring your class schedule to us during the event on Sunday, we will walk you around. So we had a question about the uh, people did notice. So the food area you'll notice to low dining hall was behind the fence. That is normally open during the specific breakfast, lunch, dinner, or brunch on the weekend's hour. Otherwise, the drink stations are out in the public. Those are normally turned off in between meals. Um, and so if you need to get water or ice, the water and ice is always turned on, but the actual uh, pop or coffee or tea or uh, hot chocolate, those stations are normally turned off in between meals and are open to you during meals. Good question there. Other questions that we can help you out with anything. Hopefully being able to see some of campus was beneficial. And absolutely, um, you know, like we saw some of the rooms, we're still getting set up and ready for you. Some of the buildings are closed because we're after hours at this time, but hopefully you could also see that we have a lot of signage around campus to prepare everyone for social distancing, whether it is using the hallways, our stairwells are labeled to go up or our stairways are labeled to go down to be able to keep everyone safe. So I will remain here and orientation leaders will remain here. I'll turn off the recording. If anyone needs anything, we'll stick around if you want to chat like sometimes we do, or if you have any questions. Otherwise, hopefully this was some good information and you can have a good night and I'll continue to answer questions as they come in.